Alright guys, and now I want to talk about opposite color bishop end games in chess. And they're notoriously known for being usually drawn. Now that's not always the case, and if you have two extra pawns, uh, there are good winning chances in most positions. But if it's just one extra pawn or it's equal material, then if there is nothing else on the board but the opposite color bishops, like in this case, then it's probably a draw. It's a safe bet that black can't win, even though he has an extra pawn right now. So why is that the case? Because all that white has to do is put the pawns on the same color of his bishop. And in a way, the opponent can get to the white squares. The black bishop is in another dimension, in a parallel world. He cannot touch my pawns at all. All I have to do with my bishop is to go back and forward on this long diagonal and make sure that the opponent's king can't make any progress on uh, the king side. And my king, on the other hand, will stop any pass pawn that black can create on the queen side because that's where his pawn majority is. Here he has uh, three versus two, and there we have two versus two. For the defender, it's always good to have symmetrical pawn structure, so it would actually be better if this pawn was here. But even if the pawn was on f6, uh, it still should be a draw, and all that white has to do is just wait. And he puts the bishop here and uh, resorts to passive defense, so we make sure that our bishop doesn't get trapped, so we just keep going ba back and forward, back and forward, and then we just stay. And there is nothing black can do, including pushing his pawns, that will make me go away from this diagonal. And I just say, the bishop can't help the king in attacking that pawn. It's, like I said, in another dimension. And let's say he tries to, uh, and goes all the way back to here, kicks away my bishop, and then starts pushing these pawns, right? So uh, first, you always want to attack the opponent's pawns, and uh, that way you can make a blockade. So uh, in this way, the black pawn has to go here, and now I have the square for my bishop. So this is called uh, attacking uh, from the tail. So it's like you're trailing them. Uh, and uh, when the pawns go on the dark squares, on the color where they're safe, let's say they had like three pawns. Now I can make a complete blockade with, for example, a king and a bishop, all because I attack them from the tail or cross tails, as Dvoretsky put it, who is a famous chess author. And then when all these pawns are on the dark squares, I can make a complete blockade of the light squares where they cannot cross. It's like a fence for the black pawns. And if, for example, let's put away those pawns again. If black tries to make any progress on the queen side, then I can just put my king to stop the remaining past pawn, the extra pawn that they still have. And the important thing to keep in mind is where should my king go? I have a3, a1, or a2. The right square is, of course, a2, because the bishop cannot get my king as he's in a parallel universe, quite literally, on a light square. Uh, while my bishop will just go back and forward, back and forward, and will say, how are you ever going to win this? There is no way. The defending side will always try to put pawns on the color of their bishop. And the attacking side will try the opposite, to put the opponent's pawns on the color of the attacking bishop. Uh, if, for example, all my pawns were on the dark squares and they were fixed on the dark squares, so maybe something like this. Now here, uh, and let's put the bishop on, uh, on e2. Now here, white is actually in trouble because there is no way to uh, save that pawn. If the pawn was on g2, then this would be an easy draw and all I have to do is just keep the pawn. Uh, uh, protected by the bishop. Now, there is one more trick you should know, and it's a very important position. Uh, and the position looks something like this. So what if black has two extra pawns and we have opposite color bishops? Is it still a draw? Uh, yes, it is. And let me show you how. So this pawn will have to cross a light square, and in fact, many light squares, to get to the end. Uh, the dark squares will be really easy and nobody can stop them from going on the dark squares. The light squares will be really hard to cross because my bishops, uh, my bishop will be watching out for the light squares. So my bishop's job is to make sure that I control the light squares and I attack the black pawns when they get to the light squares. 
so that the black pawns don't feel comfortable and want to go in the dark squares. My dream is by the time the pawns get to here, g4 and f4, my bishop should be on d1. If he's on d1 and the king is protecting it, the key is that black wants to push the pawn here so that the pawns are safe and now his king can come in and try to help. But wait a second, now I have the blockade I was talking about earlier and there is no way you can cross this blockade no matter how much you want it to. And all I need to do is make sure my bishop is looking at that pawn because if my bishop was looking in the other direction, let's say uh, my bishop was over here, it looks uh, uh, very similar. It looks like I'm doing the same thing, but suddenly this black king has extra options. First of all, he can cross. Second of all, uh, if my king tries to stop him from that way, he can cross this way and then start pushing the f pawn until he gets a queen all because my bishop isn't putting any pressure i have to attack those black pawns in order to provoke them to go forward and when i provoke them i say come on push push and when he pushes the pawn now i create a complete blockade now what's the trick if he just pushes the pawn up to f3 i hope you guys can all see it here is the final sacrifice i sacrifice my opposite color bishop just to take his two remaining pawns and force a draw by insufficient material. So guys, if you're the losing side, always put pawns on the same color as your opposite colored bishop.